Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of an example of peptic ulcer disease involving the duodenum. So we can see two duodenal ulcers here. Let's orientate ourselves. In this area where the mucosa looks a little bit different, here is the distal stomach, the antral pyloric region. These are two punched out duodenal ulcers, and this is the proximal duodenum. Taking a closer look at these ulcers, you will see that they are very sharply demarcated. They are rounded. And if you look at the base, the base appears quite clean. The edges are flat and they are not raised or heaped. Let's take a closer look at peptic ulcer disease. Peptic ulcer disease is chronic mucosal ulceration that involves the duodenum or the stomach and usually the distal stomach. It is caused by H. pylori infection most commonly, can also be caused by NSAIDs or cigarette smoking, and there are some risk factors that contribute to it, including psychological stress, where there is increased gastric acid secretion, and Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, where there are gastrinomas that again result in increased acid secretion. So there is usually a background of H. pylori-associated gastritis, and the mucosal injury that is caused can be compounded and contributed to by drugs such as aspirin. So the resulting effect is increased gastric acid secretion as well as decreased protective duodenal bicarbonate secretion. Clinically, the patients may present with burning pain in the epigastric region, usually after meals, and this is relieved by food or alkali. They may also have bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract, and if this bleeding is relatively mild over time, this can cause iron deficiency anemia. However, if the bleeding is due to erosion of a larger vessel, for example here, we can see two vessel cross-sections in the base of this peptic ulcer. This can give rise to potentially massive bleeding, hematemesis and melina, and even exsanguination. And another potentially life-threatening complication is perforation, full thickness perforation through the wall of the stomach or the duodenum, giving rise to peritonitis. In the long term, there may be fibrosis and thickening of the gastric or duodenal wall in the region of the ulcer, giving rise to potentially obstruction, such as gastric outlet obstruction. All these virtual specimens are fully interactive, and you can access them through our online web resource, PathWeb. You can register for free by scanning this QR code. Grossly peptic ulcers are usually solitary, although we do see two ulcers here. They have a characteristic very punched out appearance, as you see here, with flat and sharply defined edges. If the edges or margins are heaped up, fleshy or raised, then this may actually indicate a malignant ulcer rather than peptic ulcer disease, which is benign. The base can be smooth and appears clean because of peptic digestion of the exudate, or we can sometimes actually see some inflammatory exudate overlying the base. On microscopy, there are several layers. We see a fibrinoinflammatory exudate, followed by a layer of necrosis, then granulation tissue, and finally fibrosis. And there is a separate talking slide video highlighting the microscopic features of peptic ulcer in PathWeb. This is the second example that I briefly showed. And again, we can see a large punched out ulcer in the duodenum. This is the gastric antrum. If we look closely within the base of this ulcer, we can see these vascular structures, and therefore this ulcer would have caused very severe gastrointestinal bleeding. And finally, here is another example. This ulcer is in the stomach, and we can see that it is again very punched out. Over here, the wall is markedly thickened by fibrosis, so this also shows us the chronic nature of this ulcer. This is taken from a live page in PathWeb, and as you scroll down, you can see other pieces of information, annotated microscopic pictures, and also other videos explaining the gross 
and microscopic features of this condition. Thank you.